In this presentation, we will take a look at the liquidation of a partnership and a situation where a partner results in a negative capital count during the liquidation process and does not pay back the partnership for the negative capital account resulting in us having to allocate that capital account to the remaining partners. Here's going to be our data. We're going to put this in a table format and then work it through with journal entries and a trial balance. First thing we want to do is work out what our uh, rates will be. We're going to have the 2, 3, 1 split here. So just remember how to deal with these. We're just going to add them up. 3 plus 2 plus 1 adds up to 6. And then we'll just take uh, the division, the fraction of 3 to 6, 2 to 6, 1 to 6. Or 3 divided by 6 is 50%. For K uh, is capital. Uh, it's not there yet. No. And then it's 2 over 6 for um, C's. Notice it's not exact here. That's why we need a ratio. And then 1 over 6. And note, again, it's not going to be exact when we write it down. So when we write these down, then K's was 50%. C, about 33.33. Not exact. That's why we use ratios. And then we've got 16.67. Uh, not exact. That's why we use ratios. Then we're going to say that we have the balances. This is kind of like the trial balance, but in table format. We've got assets including cash. We've got inventory. We've got liabilities of accounts payable, 240000 Then we've got the three capital accounts for our three partners. Note that this is just basically a uh, accounting equation problem when we consider it in table format. It's like a trial balance, but instead of debits and credits, we've got the accounting equation, which is assets 182.5 and 530 for the cash and inventory of 712,500, then the liabilities and equity of 240,000 accounts payable, 93,000 capital, 212.5 capital, and 167,000 capital for 212,500, the assets equaling the liabilities and equity. We're going to go through our normal process, through the closing process, first selling the inventory, then allocating that gain or loss to the capital accounts in accordance with their profit sharing agreement. Then we're going to see if there's any negative capital accounts and deal with them. Then there will be in this problem and we'll have to deal with it. And once, deal, once dealt with, then we will pay off the liabilities, then we'll pay off the capital account balances. Has to be in this order, well it doesn't have to be, but to avoid any kind of problems or reduce them as much as possible, this is the preferred order to do this in. Otherwise, we're more likely to have negative capital accounts and not only have them, but them being kind of partially our fault by not going in the proper order. So we're going to go through this, sell the assets. We're going to sell the assets for 320000 even though they're on the books for 530 So we're going to get cash at 320. We're going to take them off the books at 530. And then we're going to allocate the difference to our three owners in accordance with their profit sharing. So we've got uh, the 530 minus the 320. It means we have a loss of 210 times 50% times 0.5 is 105. Note we can use the 50% there and be exact, but we can also use the ratio, which was 210,000 loss times, I'm going to say 3 over 6, times 3 over 6, 3 divided by 6, 105. Now that's going to be more important for the second one because we have that same loss, 210,000. And if I say times 0.3333, it's not exact. We're off by a few bucks here. So we can do our same uh, ratio analysis, 210,000 times uh, the... 2, this is the poem of 2, divided by 6. And that'll give us a more exact number. And the same is true for M here, where we have, and I'm using these ratios, these will come into play later, these other ratios. So then we'll have the 210,000 times, we're going to say 1 over 6, gives us the 35. So that's what our split will be. And that means that our assets still equal our liabilities plus equity with this transaction. If we bring down our balances, then cash goes from 182500 up by 320000 to 502500 Inventory goes down to zero. Accounts payables remains the same. 
the capital account for ka goes from 93,000 down by 105,000 to negative 12,000. That's the problem. That's what we will have to deal with. C's capital account goes from 212,500 down by 70,000 to 142,500. M's capital account goes from 167,000 down by 35,000 to 132,000. Then we're going to allocate this this deficit. Now we we're going to say here that we went to K and we said, "Hey K, could you pay the capital account because we did everything we're supposed to do. We sold the inventories, but we had this loss." We allocated that loss in accordance with the profit sharing, which means 50% to you. And that brought your capital account balance from a positive to a negative, representing the fact that you owe the company money. And K very well may say, you know, I'm not paying the company because it's a liquidation process and I just want out of this partnership and I don't expect to pay anything at this point. I had a $93,000 capital account before the process and whatnot. So uh, we won't get into like the legal scenario between the other partners and K here, we're just going to say, okay, well, if that happens, there might come a point where we have to just allocate that to the other partners and move forward so that we can close out this uh, partnership agreement. So how are we going to do that? Uh, we would have to uh, allocate it to allocate that loss, then reducing C and M's capital account in some way. So we're going to take that 12,000 and allocate it. Now, we can't allocate it using the same ratio, 3 to 1, because the 3 is gone. We can't allocate it to K. He's gone. So we got to allocate it between the other two. One way we can do that is we can say, okay, well, there's 2 and there's two and 1 remaining for C and M, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So we can take the 2 over 3 and allocate 66.666 of that 12,000 to C. And then, of course, we can take the 1 over 3 for the 0.333. So, again, they're not exact, so the ratio would be better to use. So, if we took the 12,000, in other words, times 2 over 3, that's going to be 8,000. And if we take that 12,000 times 1 over 3, that's going to give us 36. So, we'll apply that 12,000. Uh, taking cap, uh, K's capital down to zero, apply it 8,000 to C and 4,000 to M. So then if we look at our balance then, we're going to say that the cash is still just bringing brought down. The accounts payable just bringing it down. The K's capital now going to zero. And the C's capital starting at 142,500 going down by 8,000. His portion of what he's reducing his capital account by due to C not paying back partnership for the negative capital account to 134,500 and then M starting at 132,000 going down by 4,000 same scenario his portion or her portion of the 12,000 being a reduction to 128,000 then we're going to pay off the liability accounts so the liabilities are on the books for 240 we're going to pay off the 240 and then we're going to reduce the liability by the 240. If we bring the balances down, then we're going to say the 502,500 cash minus the 240,000 cash brings us to 262,500. Counts payable going from 240 down by 242, zero. Then we'll just bring down the capital accounts at 134,500 for C and 128,000 for M. Then we have the distribution to the owners. All we have remaining being cash and what is owed to the owners and we can just distribute what is owed bringing the balances down to zero uh, note uh, that these these final distributions and the capital counts along this whole way will not <laughs> necessarily match the profit sharing agreement so remember the profit sharing only has to do with the allocation of net income not with draws not with investments therefore the balance in the capital accounts will not necessarily match the ratios given for the profit sharing. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing in terms of a trial balance, in terms of journal entries. When you see this in practice, many times you'll work with a lawyer if you actually do this in practice, and they will uh, m um, probably, most likely. And a lot of times uh, they like to see things in table format. Obviously, when recording the information or just going through it, I like to see journal entries as well to visualize this process. So the journal entries will help us to visualize what actually happens. And when we actually do it, we will need to have the journal entries. 
So here's our trial balance, our, our nice little short trial balance that gives us an example here. And we've got the debits in positive numbers, the credits in negative numbers, debits minus the credits equal zero or debits equal the credits. We have the assets in green, liabilities in orange, and the capital in blue. The income statement, revenue and expenses in dark blue. Note, there are none. They're all zero. No revenue and expense accounts. When we close out the company, we need to have those at zero, meaning we have, in essence, a post-closing trial balance with no income statement accounts. That must be the case, otherwise the capital accounts will not be properly valued because the net income hasn't been allocated to it. So now we're going to go through the closing process. Same thing as we did with our table, journal entry format, first selling the inventory, the only inventory we have, selling the assets, <laughs> the only assets we have being inventory. And obviously cash is an asset, but we're not selling cash. We're going to get cash. So cash will be the last thing we do. We're going to sell all other assets. So we're going to say that we sold it for 320000 and the assets on the book for, for $530,000. So we're going to reduce it by 530. 530 minus 320 gives us a difference or a loss of 210. So here's going to be our journal entry. We result in this loss. If we post this out, the cash is going to go from 182,500 up by 320,000 to 502,500. Inventory is going to go from 530,000 down by 530,000 to zero. And the loss then going from zero up in the debit direction to buy 220, 210 to 210. Now, of course, you'll note that we have recorded this loss here a little bit different than we did it on the table where we just allocated that difference directly to the capital accounts in accordance with their profit sharing. This loss is probably the way we would see it more likely uh, in practice when we sell an asset, something like this. We would record the loss. So we were, we're doing this in kind of a two-step process. We're going to record the loss and then we're going to go back and uh, close it out in essence have a little closing process to close it out to the capital accounts because that's probably more familiar than us doing uh, just allocating that loss in this journal entry so that's our next step we're going to have to get rid of this get back to the post closing trial balance close any income statement accounts to the capital accounts before moving forward to do that we're going to say that this loss is going to be allocated to kc and m respectively in accordance with 50.33 uh, and 17 uh, percent profit sharing. Now note that these are, are not exact again, so they're just going to be rounded because we're not using the actual ratio. So 210,000 times 50 percent, uh, that one's exact because that's uh, 50 percent, but this one's an estimate. So remember this was uh, 210,000, it's really like 0.3333. And that's pretty close. It should be 70,000. And then 210,000 times 0 0.16666 is what it, what it really is. And that's pretty close there. So just be, be aware that if we, if we just used uh, 0.33, we would be, you know, fairly, fairly substantially off, right? 0.33. That's why we use ratios. So it should be 70,000. So uh, just be careful with those. Um, so we're going to go through these again. C, we're going to have uh, 70,000 and M, 35,000 allocated of this 210. So 105, 70, 35. And then we're going to credit the gain or loss. So in other words, I would think of it this way. We're going to take the gain or loss off the books with a credit, which we put on the bottom to be proper. And then we're going to debit the uh, capital accounts in accordance with the profit sharing of the 105, the 70, and the 35 which is 50.33 and 0.17% of the 270,000, about 0.3333, really 0.16666 on forever. Okay, if we post this out then, we're going to say that the capital account for K, it started at 93,000. We're going to make it go down by 105,000, not only to zero, but past it to negative 12,000. There's our problem. We shouldn't have a negative capital account. We shouldn't have a debit balance in the capital account. And that's what we're going to have to deal with. Then we have the 70,000. It's going to be posted to this 212,500. Goes down by 70 to 142,500. Then we have the 35,000. It's going to be posted here to the 167,000, bringing it down by 35 to 132,000. 
Then we have the 210,000 gain or loss. It's going to be posted here. Bringing that 210 down by 210 to 0. So if we look at our balances now, uh, our problem here is going to be this 12,000 negative capital. Same thing we had on the table. We're going to ask uh, K, the partner, hey, you know, we did everything we could. You got a negative capital account. You really should pay the partnership back in the closing process because that 12,000 um, should be, is really kind of owed to the, uh, either the liability or the other two partners. And so we really kind of need you to pay the partnership before we can move forward with the partnership. Closing or liquidation, if they say no, <laughs> then uh, at some point we might have to say, okay, we're going to move forward anyway. And again, we won't get into the legal ramifications of that, but uh, we'll just move forward in terms of journal entries, which means we're going to have to allocate that 12000 to C and M in some way. So now we're going to reduce the 12000 and allocate it. So this is going to go off the books. It's on the books at a debit. We have to make it go to zero, doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. And then we're going to debit the other two capital accounts, C and M's, in accordance with their profit sharing. Now we have a problem to do that, same problem we had on the table, in that uh, the profit share was at a 321, which is which adds up to 6, which is 50, 30, and 0.17 about. But this this we can't allocate here because this person is that's who we're allocating from. We're taking it from Case Capital, who's basically not paying it back to go to C and M. So we can't use the same ratios. We can't use uh, 0.33 or 0.17 because that doesn't add up to 100. So we, we, well, what we can do is that's the same thing we did on the table. Take these two. That's a two and a one, by the way. And then the two and the one, which adds up. Wow, it's a big equal. Adds up to three. So then we can take the 12,000 uh, times two over three is 8,000. And we can take the 12,000 times one over three, which, whoop, whoop. 12,000 times 1 over 3 is 4,000. Or in other words, we're taking 2 over 3 is 0.666, which matches here, times 12,000 is 8,000, and we're taking 1 over 3 is 0.3333 times 12,000 is the 4,000. Okay, so that's going to be our allocation. So we're going to take this off the books, making it go to zero, allocate the debits, which will reduce their capital accounts for C and M in accordance with the profit sharing, which we just reallocated to be this 0 0.6666 and 0.33333 on forever. Okay, so then we're going to post this. So there, there's the 12,000 first, bringing the 12,000 down by 12,000 to zero. The other two losing or reducing their capital accounts, the 8,000. Uh, C started at 142,500, going down by 8,000 debit to 134,500. Uh, M starting at 132,000, going down by 4,000 to 128,000. So now we have our balances. We only have our two partners. They're both negative capital accounts, so we are okay to move forward and pay off the liabilities. So we're going to pay off the liabilities now with cash. So the liabilities are on the books for 240,000 credit. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, debit, to bring them off the books. And credit, of course, cash. That's what we're going to use to pay it. So if we post this out then, this liability is going to be posted here. This 240, bringing it down by 242, zero. Then we have the cash here. It's going to be posted to the 502, 500 cash debit. We are going to credit it, making it go down to 262,500. Now we're going to be left with just the cash and the two uh, capital accounts. Nice, easy ending process here. All we have to do now is pay off the cash in accordance with whatever is in the capital accounts. No ratios, no math here. We're just going to pay it off whatever's there. So that means that this capital account's on the books for 134000 It's a credit. We're going to debit it. This capital account for M is on the books for 128000 It's a credit. We're going to debit it. Then we're going to credit the cash, which is on the books for 262000 which also, of course, is equivalent to 134500 plus the 128000 If we post this out, then the uh, capital account for C goes from 134500 down by 134500 to zero. M's capital account goes from 128000 down by 128000 to zero. 
cash goes from 262,500 going down by 262,500 to zero. And now we have all zeros and the liquidation process is complete.